with Rock Stars. It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with a review for Love and Hip Hop New York Season 7, The Reunion Part 1. So, as these reunions go, actually, this reunion was a little bit different than any of the other um, New York in particular reunions because it just seems like everybody has a point to prove. Everybody wants to be the hardest, the toughest. Everybody wants to fucking fight. I guess maybe because Atlanta is coming back and they know they've got to turn it up because Atlanta is still the fan favorite, I believe. New York is my least favorite franchise. And this damn reunion, I was just looking at it like, what is going on? Like every 15 minutes, I felt so fucking sorry for Nina. I felt like she needed like her own personal guards around her. Remember, I used to always say they have a lot of respect for Nina. Somehow, some way, maybe because Nina been around a long time now, the respect is going little by little because all of a sudden, they... I mean, they just kept on anyway, you guys. We're we going to get to all of that. I'm just saying, they was doing the most last night. It was entirely too much, okay? But um, I thought everybody looked nice. With the exception of Mariah Lynn's purple hair, which still didn't look bad, but it's still just like, that's just, when you're trying to look like something, I don't know if lavender hair is the way to go. But you know, every season she comes with different color. Last time she had the... Um, mermaid blue this time it's the my little pony lavender but other than that i thought everybody you know really looked nice yandy this is probably the best i have ever seen that girl look clothes was nice hair was nice makeup was nice i thought cardi looked nice decked out in her gucci her sister looked a mess from the outfit to the hair i was just like what is with this all burnt out ass orange hair it looked over processed and just wrong uh the dress with that very low cut that was no good like no i don't even remember what Ryland had on thought Bianca looked nice. Like, I thought everybody looked nice with the exceptions of a few. Even Nina. She had on, um, like, a Versace, um, esque. Because I don't know if it was kind of really Versace. You know, it had, like, the chains, you know, that... That same kind of idea. But anyway, you guys, let's just get started. So we start with Cardi B, who I've already told you guys is leaving the show. And I think that that is going to be best for her. I feel like the show just brings out a side of Cardi or, it, you know, it highlights, as I was pointed out yesterday on Twitter, it highlights some character traits of hers that maybe we would like to forget in our newfound um, career of being a rap star and moving on to acting and things like that she still just does the most and i just was so disappointed watching her because i felt like she was really putting on for the camera she really wanted to prove that she was like this hard-ass new york new york gangster bitch because you know they were talking about swift and her relationship with him they had the girl asia there who that to me was foul mona bitch you know you should not have that girl there because she was barely on the show you guys flew her in i guess from overseas and then she came down there for that the girl looked really pretty and as she was sitting there trying to tell her story of why she was talking to cardi b the way that she was or at least as she was trying to tell cardi cardi was completely taken over she felt like the girl had a problem with her because she was a stripper and had a problem with her even before even though the girl said that she had a problem with the girl because her boyfriend was fucking around with her as far as she knew and he had even thrown in her face that if he slept with her then he would be the man so even though she maybe, maybe shouldn't even have said what she said. Really, the point here is you were fucking around with somebody else's boyfriend and the girl was pissed about it. So I think she had a reason to feel that way. But Cardi was just so, and then she was so just, uh, so childish, so childish. She jumped up at one point, security rushed up there. Then when she couldn't get back to her seat right away because security was there, then she decided to sit on Swift. She said that she was going to sit right there on his dick. And then she just kept on asking the girl, like, why does she have a problem with her? Why, 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 why? Yeah, I'm not into the whole showboating and showcasing for the TV. You know, it's just unnecessary. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I was disappointed. I know people are going to be like, why would you put all your all into the way Cardi should act anyway? But I really was. I want her to be different because I want her to make it. I want it to happen for her. And it ain't going to happen being like this. At least if it is going to happen, it's not going to be the kind of, you know, it's going to be like notoriety. It's not going to be like good fame. Anyway, child, I can't. Her sister, how she jumped up and ran over. I feel like I'm being preachy, but I just feel like that's how I feel. She threw her shoe at the girl. That shoe hit her right. 
<laughs> I was like, ooh, I know that shit was real hard right here in the Thoke area. Then the sister jumped up and ran over there and even kind of got a sucker punch in on the girl. I was just like, why y'all doing all of this? Why ain't nobody mad at Swift? When the girl specifically said that he said if he fucked Cardi B, then he will be considered the man. I guess all that just went out the window because all Cardi could see is the girl saying shit about her while she's fucking around with her man. That is niggatry at its best. I just cannot with Cardi and her sister. Then we move on to, that's right, you guessed it, the creep squad. We finally tried to get to the bottom of why the crew has busted up the way that it has, or at least how they have tried to oust the AAW being Cisco. Now, Cisco said the HHO had a problem with him for a long time. For the last few years, I'm assuming this all started back when the whole drama was going on with Diamond. If I remember correctly, Cisco was the one that was fooling with Diamond and then Rich decided to get with her, right? So, kind of Rich was the one that started all the problems, but I don't remember 100%. So, if I'm wrong, y'all just, y'all leave it in the comments. They said that they've tried to fix it over and over. Okay, even the DVD has stepped in and said, you know what? I've tried to sit down and talk to you many, many times. Okay, like how many times do you really want me to intervene with you guys' problems? Cisco's whole thing was like, shit, I should have cracked Rich's head a long time ago. When they show old rickety teeth Rich, <laughs> he's still emotional. He got to separate himself because sometimes when shit just don't be right, he can't still be right. I was like, why do you get so upset? Something with this little triangle with Mariah and Rich and Cisco. I know all last week I kept on saying, you know, that it was some gay tendencies because he was so damn uh, dramatic about what happened with Cisco. But then people pointed out to me that maybe he actually has feelings for Mariah. And now he's upset that Cisco is fooling with Mariah because he wasn't upset that DJ Excited Self was working with her. You know, so maybe it's more to this. And there, because everybody is too emotional, even Mariah Lynn. I was just like, yeah, too much. Okay. The discussion of who started the Creep Squad started. Cisco insists that he was the one that started the Creep Squad. And of course, the HHO and the DVD felt like they were the ones that started it. At least Peter was the one who said that he started the name and I think that's true I actually think that I remember Peter coming up with the creep squad but as far as the antics it was definitely between Cisco and, and Richie I think that we associated Richie with the whole creep squad um uh, situation from the beginning. I'm gonna have to get with the board and see what they say about this whole thing yeah you know it's all very official and put down in writing we just gotta get to it make a note to myself to contact the secretary of the cream squad <laughs> who do you guys think that started it's so childish though it's like uh, you guys are grown ass men you're arguing about this crew even if it's not considered the creep squad when you start talking about you guys as a little group as if you're like a gang or something then it just turns into something else because you're not a gang you're not trying to claim turf so I'm not really understanding the high emotions that goes along with this whole thing. Because usually most grown-ass men be like, I don't fuck with him no more. Okay? But these these group of people try to, try to you know, really just... Oh, child, I can't. DJ excited self over there trying to distance himself from the creep squad. But I was just like, motherfucker, you still is the CEFN. He really shouldn't be the CEFN, though, y'all. I still do think that he is the uh, the COC. That's the commissioner of cornballs. He's so fucking corny. Anyway, you guys, Cisco jumped up, went over there, act like he was going to fuck Richie Dollars up. Richie old man body don't move like that, you know. I was like, well, you better get out the fucking way. And then when they got settled back down, Mariah. I was gonna tell Richie he needs to shut up before she kills him dead. Coughing over. It's another one that's just stupid and corny sometimes. But uh, she was saying like Richie need to be quiet before she sends Cisco back over there to whoop his ass again. I said, oh, you got orders on the AAW? I guess. So it was silly. It was foolishness. All of them sitting up there, hopefully if they were watching last night, they realized how silly and foolish they look. The one good part is the AAW feel bad about taking the money out the DVD's hands, considering that the boy got all these fucking kids and he got to pay for them and everything. So he came on correct, gave him his check uh, for the money that he was supposed to make down in New Orleans. Peter just went on and gave it to Tara. I said, Tara, you better be ready to split that ten ways, baby girl. I guess she'll get three parts of it, considering she got half a tribe with her. Now, they asked Snoop what made her come on to the show. Oh, man, listen. <laughs> it's this man sitting across from me. He just looking at me like, what am I doing? Okay, let me get back in character. 
I can't do it with him looking at look, y'all wanna see him. Let me see if I can if I can get it. Can you guys see that man sitting over there? <laughs> He's just looking at me. <laughs> Let me see if I can <laughs> Let's see if I can get it done even while the man is staring down my throat. Oh man, listen, I just came on her so that people can get to know the real me. Let me continue to smile. I got a beautiful smile. As far as Jay, you know, Nina asked her if the baby's still on the porch, what not. <laughs> she had a nerd to get mad. My baby is with his father. I left it. I said, girl, you ain't left that boy with that father. Stop it. Okay, he running out of water. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Long story short, Snoop says that her behavior was questionable. Jay didn't like that. As a matter of fact, her feelings was hurt. She said that she never, ever had problems with infidelity with Snoop or anything like that. So that's why she was thrown for a loop when she got with, um, you know, S Sophie Green. And Snoop was just like, I'm selling the toy line. What do you want me to do? She was just like, bitch, I don't want you to be sucking on no fucking strawberries and feeding it to her on the internet. Okay, so they get the arguing back and forth. And, you know, Snoop was like, she crazy. That Y'all didn't even see all of the craziness with Jay. But Jay started crying and everything because she was just like, she loves Snoop. And for Snoop to do her the way that she did and all of that. And even Snoop was like, see, even now. Okay. You see how she acting? That's how she is all the time. I can't, I can't deal. She can't deal with it. I said, girl, just leave her alone. Just leave her alone. And y'all both go on about your business. So uh, Nina pointed out that Jay would like to be Snoop's friend. And Snoop said, yeah, well, that's about all it's going to be. Then we got to the sad part of the show is when Remy and Pap was up there talking about her um, ectopic pre pregnancy. And it got emotional. It got emotional for Juju that was sitting up there, a friend of hers. It got even emotional for Jay. I actually did believe Jay in that moment. Those type of things are very difficult. And people don't understand them until you've been through something like that. So I have sympathy for Remy and Pap. They just seem like a cool couple. And I hope that they're able to get pregnant. They say that now, I guess she doesn't have any fallopian tubes. She had it in the past when she was like in her teens. She lost one fallopian tube. And I guess with this one, she lost another fallopian tube. Is that what she said? Either way it goes, she either only has one or none. And that's why they have to work on having this baby, you know, through in vitro fertilization. So, Pap says, any doctors out there watching? I was like, Pap, I don't think they watching this show. But, <laughs> you know, maybe. I will say that when I go to the dentist's office... My dentist and her assistant be talking about these different shows. I was like, it's so funny. I was like, here you are, the doctor, and you still watching this bullshit. It's a guilty pleasure for all of us. Then we get to the baby mamas, one, two, and three. It is so much more of the same shit of trying to understand the timeline of when Erica was with Mendeecee. Yandy says she don't know when she was with him before her, but while she's been in the picture, Erica ain't been there, so that's all she is mostly concerned about. Erica goes on and on telling the story about how Yandy came to the apartment that she and Mendeecee's lived in, and she would ask her why would she even do any of this stuff, and Yandy would say that she couldn't be around Mendeecee's when he's walking his dog and some crazy shit like that, and Yandy was just like I am a fucking college graduate do I sound like I would sit up there and let some man tell me some shit like that, that I would say that to somebody else you must be fucking crazy I was like the story is kind of crazy but I mean stranger things has happened but I was like finding that part of hard to understand but child so anyway Erica says that Yandy is a fucking grade A liar I feel that Yandy has her ways and definitely can be a liar but I also feel that Erica has her way of just making shit worse but the discussion still is, is when did these girls overlap with Mendeecee's when she you know when they, when they was fucking around with him so Kim jumps up hat on her smoker jacket extraordinaire y'all saw it was crushed velvet it had some gold stringing on it she got up and she said Mendeecee's was cheating on Samantha with this other woman okay she did not say erica and she was trying to say that samantha broke up with him because he was cheating but of course judy would not let her and kim was just like you need to be quiet bitch get out of it she was just like no bitch <laughs> what is going on they are doing so much okay so judy and kim are arguing back and forth and it's just all this pandemonium now by this time this is like the third or fourth fight ain't even been 45 minutes 
Security rushes up there and gets everybody to settle down. You know, the whole time Nina is just like, just everybody just please talk to me. That's it. So they sit back down. Judy says that Samantha cheated on Mendeecees. That's why he broke up with her. And Samantha, the whole time was over there, was just boiling because she was just... Now, Samantha looked beautiful, but her mannerisms and shit is full on thugged out New York nigga. I was just like, shit, she looked like she will fuck somebody up. So because we can't get all these stories to match up and can't get nobody to sit down long enough to say what the fucking story is, Nina lets them know that she spoke to Mendeecee. And then we get to hear the, the conversation. And I guess Mendeecee's with an S because somebody had to get in my comments and tell me that it's just Mendeecee. I said, girl, I've been calling them Mendeecee's all this time. Okay, it's going to stay Mendeecee's at this point. <laughs> okay, fuck. Shit. He was real matter of fact. He said that him and Samantha were together. While they were together, Erica was just his homegirl. Nothing was going on at the time, but he knew who she was. She knew who he was. But then as time went on, he cheated on Samantha with Erica. But he says that we were not in a relationship, and she knew that, and I knew that. She ain't never been to my house. She never said, I love you. I never said, I love you to her. I mean, this is no disrespect to her. I mean, this is the mother of one of his children, but he was like, I'm just telling you what it was. We weren't like that. So then Nina was like, okay, well, she says that you guys traveled the world together and you know did you guys try he's like no listen back in the day i was rolling in the dough had my money when i would go on trips to go somewhere and you know she was free and i was just like hey you want to go you want to roll through you know i was going to aruba or i was going to the dr and she was just like be like okay he was like but it wasn't like we had then sat down and dreamed about this vacation and planned and it was like baby i can't wait till i get there i'm gonna wear my special gown it was not like that so while he's explaining it i was like oh Erica, it is sounding like you are a slide, okay? Like, you were the side bitch. Like, you guys was cool, okay? And you guys had a long-term, you know, fucking around kind of situation going on there. But he did not look at you as probably the way that you was looking at him. You thought you were in a relationship. And he was just like, we was just kicking it. We was having fun. That's, that's heartbreaking for a woman to hear. But anyway, he went on to say that, you know, that was 15 years ago when they traveled. They ain't done none of that shit recently. I mean, that was even before he had his baby with Samantha. Then he said after um, him and Samantha broke up, he was with this other girl. He was in a long-term relationship with that girl. And that shit started to die out. And in the same time, he met Yandy, and then him and Yandy started um, seeing each other. But then Yandy went out of the country for a few months overseas, and while she was gone, he said Erica came over one time. He said they fucked one time without a condom. This is when she got pregnant. That's how the baby came. Okay, they asked him, well, did he have anything to say to Yandy? He said, I love you, and I appreciate you. And then he hung up the phone. I'll say, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna say from the reaction that Erica had because you know she wasn't going all off and saying he was lying she was just like it's just really sad that he tried to rewrite history kind of thing but I was just like I, even though Mendeecees was doing his shit and going back and forth between these three girls plus this other one whoever she might be she might show up next season I bet you Mona was in the back like calling like find out who that girl is find out I'm sure it was way more shit to it but that's the gist of the story, what Mendeecee said. I think Erica just thought she was more than she was. She overplayed her position, like Yandy said. <laughs> I hate to even agree with Yandy. And then, of course, Kim Bella, she jumps in. Okay, that's the bulldog that uh, Yandy has as her protector. And I guess she gonna beat up Erica. I don't even remember why they was fighting at this point. But it's something to have to do with cheating Mendeecees and all of the rest of them. She jump up and run over there and then, you know, security comes. And then uh, while they trying to get it all broke up, <laughs> something happens and Yandy gets even madder. And she tries to jump up and do something over there too. I said, oh, that was a little bit of time. I actually thought that Yandy might actually try to do something, but they wasn't going to let her get over there. There's so many security up there. I'd be like, why do we go through this every time? So I think that that's fight number four or five, right? I think that's fight number five. Tell me, why did they start fighting again when they started talking about Kim's heart attack and how Yandy and Judy was making fun of it? You know, Kim was like, that just let me know that they don't care about family. I said, girl, don't pull the family card. Y'all been going through this shit all this time. All of a sudden, Mendeecee's butch-ass sister jumped in and she was trying to tell Samantha, like, bitch, fuck you, yo cockeyed, deadbeat-ass mother. <laughs> why she say that? Okay, that damn Samantha jumped up and she wanted to fucking kill kill her okay she jumped up and she was doing all these antics and i was scared and she had on a sequence dress and everything i said honey i have absolutely no doubt 
that Samantha would fuck up anybody over there. Y'all know I said before that she didn't look like she was a fighter, but honey, all that last night, unless she really been practicing how to be tough, <laughs> don't wonder what Samantha. Y'all, let me get off of here. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Miss Rocks. Ooh, the channel is Forest Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rockstars. Bye.